everybody. Welcome. This is Teva DRC of Teva Creative Leadership. We have our teaching centers in the Charlotte region, uh, especially Fort Mill on out. We do it by fine appointment. We have all our guns ready in a spiritual sense to take on powers, principalities, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places in the believers. No, no. Though, you know, we're wrestling not with flesh and blood, no matter what it looks like people are. So we have a lot of interesting things to share, but the main thing is that we do know and we've had to have, and we're grateful for the power of God, the Holy Spirit. We believe in the Holy Spirit, Book of Acts. I've experienced it, you know, know about it and taught on it, been in experience with all kinds that do that. The Holy Spirit speaking in tongues or not, Pentecost. I'm not a Pentecostal, but I am a dressed down uh, probably a maverick to many who are the more traditional, but we believe in the body of Christ crossed by the unity and that you will have, it's optional. Nobody should force you. We believe in the supernatural and the natural. It needs both. You have to hear God, know Jesus in a relationship, be solid, good foundations. And then you hear God from the spirit of truth, John sixteen thirteen, that will guide you into all truth. What does that mean? Let's talk about that for hearing God, getting relationship with God. It says, John 16, 13 says that when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. He won't talk about himself. He'll talk about things to come. And so that means that where does the spirit of truth come from? In other words, there's a lot of spirits out there, a lot of mystery. But the spirit of truth is the Holy Spirit. And that's what we want. The Holy Spirit that is going to be, once you ask Jesus into your heart, the Messiah, you accept him and believe in his Lord and Savior, and then he'll wash away your sins for eternity, you know, and you got to hang him close and keep on, you know, walking it out with him thoroughly. But it says, then he'll give you a free deposit of the Holy Spirit book of Acts. That didn't mean you speak in tongues. That didn't mean you'll know it, you'll feel it. But that is the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5, 20. 223 love joy peace patience goodness meekness and uh spirit of temperance self-control that is the root of relationship and the root of the root of family the root of marriage being happy and getting to know the lord the father god the father's heart of god part of the things that it's such a big topic and a lot of people don't really have a big foundation of this, or there's a lot of accusation. And that's what we are trying to teach against and caution the body of Christ against in ministry. So let's sort of pull back on that, watch our tone. Let's watch our methodology. And let us assess people and correct people, evaluate people, and, you know, confront them respectfully. Because my Bible teaches us in Isaiah 118, we are to come, let us reason together, though your sins be as scarlet, you'll wash them white as snow. That it means far off Pharisees, stone throwing, and all this stuff. But when the Spirit of Truth has come, John sixteen thirteen is a great word to claim for your life. When the Spirit of Truth has come, that means if God's Holy Spirit has come, if you really met Him, you know, you know about it, and you know how to be organic. It's a relationship, not just a bunch of rules. You know, we've heard all about. Uh, the rules, you got to do the Ten Commandments, we're pro that, but it isn't a legalism. Also, it's not to make you a squire. Well off, well fed, overly self-involved, and just sort of dull down and, you know, thinking of my floor no more or dysfunction. That's the other part. When the Spirit of Truth has come, He will guide you. How does He guide you? In the inward witness of the Holy Spirit, His Spirit of Truth, and the Bible, good teaching, uh, prayer, praying in tongues if you believe in, if you'll go for that, uh, just God's grace and talking about, you know, getting knowledge and, and everything else. So if the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. Let's talk about that because you want to stay out of error, false teaching, contrived focus or demas, you know, wasting your time on earth. So when the spirit of truth has come, if he's come, you're not divining, you're not a clairvoyant, you're not reading people, you're not just getting it from the ether of the world, you know, you're not getting into the false religion. 
you're hearing from the Holy Spirit, a relationship, a private relationship is so cool. And the peace is marked by the fruit of the wisdom from above, James 3.17, that's going to be pure, peaceable, easily entreated, full of mercy and good fruit without partiality and without hypocrisy. And I try to act like that, behave like that, and that's my demeanor. All the, you know, 24-7, my goal will keep watch and evaluate myself and also leadership. So when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you slowly. No formula. It's not rocket science. It's subjective. You've got to pray and be very careful. Talk it out. Get advice. Get wisdom. Be smart. Don't just hear everything on TV or everybody says and do it. you got to hear God and make sure it lines up with the Bible. So when the spirit of truth has come, he will start to guide you. You'll have to learn about it. He will guide you into all truth. He'll also guard you and keep you safe. When the spirit of truth has come, not imagining, not uh, just uh, falling for anybody, a heebie-jeebie, a vibe. No, it's got to be the Holy Spirit and the fruit to match of James 3.17. And also, first, excuse me, 2 Timothy 1.7, test it. Test the voices, test the impressions. It says, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of his power, love, and a sound mind. All right. So those are the basics in a short time to think about, dwell upon. When the spirit of truth has come, when God's spirit of truth has come, he will guide you slowly, surely, in little teeny bits at a time and not. And eventually, he'll guide you into all the truth you will need that you will need to know for this world while we're here. So it's not all the hundred, you don't know all the internet, science, uh, quantum physics, music, uh, the Lord. You don't know anything 100%, but we can grow in that. And we and we can be surprised. Like, I'm surprised that I didn't know I'd do all this or know all this stuff. It's God and relationship and time and walking it out. Faults, wart, warts and all. So when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth and guard you. Because he'll say, don't go there. I feel a real concern. Do not go there or do go there. I want you to, you know, that's why I have a, that's why it's revealed ministry. Protection. Divine appointment like Ezekiel's wheel, Ezekiel 1, Enoch, and so forth. Very common with many people around the world. You don't have to speak in tongues to do that because my parents and grandparents and everybody did that, but they didn't speak in tongues. My mom and sister and I and all of us got it later, but hey, that's just decades of learning this, <laughs> learning it over time. So when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. He'll guard you in that fact. And he won't talk about himself. He's not selfish. He's not ambitious. He's not a faker. He's not a proud. He's not like, you know, I'm, I'm using people. Sorry. He'll talk about things to come. That's the root of hearing from God to give a word of the Lord, prophecy, a word of, you know, good things to rejoice in. So when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth, but he won't guide you to be a cult member. Things that would hurt you, control you evil eye he wouldn't guide you to do that either because that is not the quality of the fruit of the messiah christ so let me talk about this because people are really into the little minutia we want to make you know i can't cover it all but i'll we're trying when the spirit of truth has come it will be a little bitty it'll be big but you don't know but so much you'll know in part and as you grow and you pray and you believe and you have faith and god touches you and you get certain levels in your life you'll have more of the truth that you need for now, for your finances, your family, God, to get you in, you know, win the lost and all these things, help people, get your gifts going. But it won't be the whole spirit of truth. You couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle it. Nobody will have it all. We'll have part, but not all. Or we'd be explode. We'd be, you know, it's bad enough now. Everybody knows everything. Knowledge puffs up. God's love edifies, builds up. But when we get to heaven, once we cross over there and we're up in heaven, wow, there's no holes barred. All the spirit of truth that we never knew existed. Things we've never, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, 
those things which the Lord has prepared for those who love him. Those things are revealed by the Spirit in part now. That's Paul, Second uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10, one of my verses since the 80s. God has allowed me to stand and believe, and he, you know, and I haven't attained it, but I've gotten, I've grown as many have. All right, so we want to go more toward him. Now, let me close. This is not the evil eye ministry that many are accustomed to. This is a, let's figure out how to keep our good cheer. Let's keep on forgiving, persistent, not faking it. There are sober times, even bad times, sad times, but it can be really good now in the Lord, in the spirit of the Lord. And we want to keep that going with worship. We want to have more worship, get that going. That will take prayer and get our books out, our teaching center up first. Now. Isaiah 29, 11 is for everybody. You have to have a kid-like heart, a and I have a childlike heart. All right. Childlike faith. Joy. All right. When we look at the, you know, you get the oppression, depression of the world, the dysfunction, the news, all the stuff going on, life. <clears throat> Maybe you have a disease or something, you are oppressed. Well, God knows that. But we're going to teach more, Pam and I and other people. I'm going to give some, we're going to work on a series of soul prospering to work from within, to build our joy, our confidence, and our relationship with the Lord later. But I'm not going to do it tonight. So let me talk about what a great verse is. So, excuse me, Isaiah 29, excuse me, Isaiah 29, 11. And it says, I know the joy, I know the I know the plans I have for you, not for, it's for good, not for evil, but for good. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. So I, Isaiah 11, 2, 29 and 11. You can look that up and stand on it. I know the plan, says the Lord. I've already, before you were born, before you were alive, but, and before you even got on the earth, I had plans and dreams for you. And for your provision, your your ministry, your joy, your life, your fulfillment as a real person, as a Christian. God has a plan for us and let us talk on that and focus on the positive, what's going well. God is good. His mercy endures. And I'm closing it out every time I think of it. Another Isaiah. Isaiah is so me. Isaiah 118 is this. No matter if I have reproved, openly rebuked doctrine, teaching, met people or not, in ministry or real life, family or anybody, including myself, I have got to submit to God's whole counsel, and I want to. It's easy for me, frankly. It really is. Let's get that going as a mantra, even though mantra is really a more, for you know, not a Christian term, but we use it now. But Isaiah 118 says, come, the Bible teaches us to come, let us reason together, though our sins, shortcomings, failures, flubs, goofy stuff, sarcasm, all right, what we've done or not done, God's compassion. Come, says the Lord, let us reason together, though your sins be as scarlet, he will wash them white as snow. So let's teach that it's a relationship factor. It's not like, I see you and I saw you in sin. I'm going to tell everybody about it. No, that's how they, Pharisees, sorry. That's accusation. We want more compassion and confrontation. If you feel they're in sin, it's your business and your leader and their peer, you know. So a lot of this cat calling, name calling, TMZ style video, making money off that too. All that is included. Come, humility relationship come let us reason together i want to hear your story i want to know what happened what really happened i'm not going to scream at you i'm not going to berate you and bully you like your daddy did or my daddy did but see my daddy didn't do that that's what i know about it. I, I can understand easier that when i would have a sin that i you know failure or do some stupid it was not perfect but god is so loving he can handle it he'll take you back and this person right here will take you back, you know, a friend, a peer, a minister, 
we forgive and we start again. Now, I'll watch you and you'll watch me to see if, you know, they really mean it. If they've really grown up, matured, forgiven themselves, or if they're not shady. So you watch everybody, but you have fear. The only kind of fear we want is fear of the Lord. The teaching center, you know, I was getting the name of the Tavo teaching center. I said, Lord, that's just so easy. You know, I don't want to make it hard. Let's just get it out there. I didn't want to use my name, but I will. The Lord said Tavo teaching center, and it was like Tavo, it was like the holy of the the holy fear of the Lord teaching center, Fort Mill. I thought I can't put that out there. But that's what this is, to get us all ready. You know, Jesus is ready. God is ready to move. He is moving now. But is the church, or is the church a whitewashed wall, a whitewashed sepulcher? They know all the books. They know all the reading. They know all the rules. But they would rather scowl at somebody and call them a horrible thing or revile them, gossip about them, instead of relating and saying, oh, I they're failing to discern the body of Christ correctly, which can bring about two big, big penalties from the Lord, two curses you don't want. All right, so we're going to go on from there. We're going to quit and out and keep on going. And right now we're going to stop. We're, we are having trouble getting up on Rumble. It is not uploading. I'm, you know, leaving for the computer to come. And so we're using our app. But anyway, we'll get there. But otherwise, we're fine in the Lord. God bless you. This is Tavo, TJDRC. Tavo DRC signing off for now. God bless. Oh, I thought we'd finished.